In November last year, I visited the region at a time of great difficulty. Then, the crisis of the moment was political unrest, and I witnessed at first hand the worst rioting about civil rights in Hong Kong. The Sibsey Hong Kong ASHRAE and IHKE Joint Technical Symposium had to be postponed, and our schedule of meetings was rearranged on a day-to-day -day basis. It was nevertheless a busy and productive visit, and your regional representatives and those with whom I met were unfailingly appreciative and keen to engage. It was the intention at that time that the technical symposium would be held in February this year, but another crisis intervened, leading to the cancellation altogether. That crisis was COVID-19, and of course, it has gone on with frightening speed to envelop the globe and has led to the postponement of the technical symposium in the UK, among many other events in our calendar. While this latter emergency temporarily eclipsed the political situation in Hong Kong, the basic issues have not changed. In the UK, we have been following your political situation with some concern and with some puzzlement. Hong Kong has, for over a hundred years, been a cultural bridge between the West and China and other countries in what the West calls the Far East. This unique region, through its colonial influence, understands both parts of the world. This understanding is not the kind of academic appreciation that one receives through studying the other. It is the kind of deep-rooted identification that is imbued in a people who have for several generations grown up there in the melting pot of Chinese and Western cultures. Looking in on Hong Kong from the West, it seems to us that this special territory is a tremendous asset as a route to Western business and as a lens for projecting the soft power of cultural diplomacy. I am confident that all involved in these current difficulties will come to realise what a precious thing this place is, and that by working together to preserve what is special about it, it really is possible to have the best of both worlds. Whatever happens, we engineers are professional problem solvers. We are resourceful and resilient, and we will play our part in overcoming any obstacles that are placed in our way. And this we must, because I have heard of the enormous opportunities which exist for Hong Kong in the Greater Bay Area. A region of 70 million people and nine cities, with an economy of some 1.5 trillion US dollars, ahead of some countries in the G20. The opportunities for engineers in construction and infrastructure are obvious. However, the great challenge of our time is how to make economic development also environmentally sustainable development. The people I met during my visit and their colleagues in government and academia hold the key to that. Hong Kong has been cooperating with its partners in Macau and beyond the SAR on various environmental initiatives through the Hong Kong Guangdong Joint Working Group on Sustainable Development and Environmental Protection. We engineers need to do all that we can to ensure that these groups have real influence and deliver on tangible solutions for energy efficient, low carbon design for buildings and infrastructure. It is not just the new buildings and infrastructure developments that matter. The existing building stock must also play an important role. Most of the magnificent buildings that I saw during my visit will still be standing in 30 years time, when much of the world is committed to either net zero carbon emissions or at least very substantial reductions. The Memorandum of Cooperation, signed in November 2018 by various institutions and universities in Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Beijing and Shanghai to promote the energy efficient retro commissioning of buildings in the Greater Bay Area, gives hope that these buildings will also play their part in this sustainable development. Again, the people in our industry are key to delivering these improvements in efficiency. The forward thinking and research around these areas must go on. Regretfully, the Joint Technical Symposium had to be cancelled, but I had the opportunity to read many of the papers that were due to be presented. Several described new building developments with high performance aspirations aided by computer modelling 
and benchmarking against recognised environmental standards. There were papers on innovations in making the construction process itself more efficient. And equally importantly, there was research into making the management of existing buildings more efficient. Since my visit in November, I have also attended the Sibsey Ashbury Joint Symposium in Orlando, and I have seen emerging a number of common themes in research, which I have picked up on in my presidential address. It was my preparation for your symposium, which consolidated my thinking around these areas. And so, even although I did not actually get the opportunity to deliver the keynote address, you can be sure that my visit to the Hong Kong region was influential. If you listen to my presidential address, I'm certain you will recognise the themes of which I speak. 2019 was, of course, a particularly important year as the Sibsey Hong Kong branch celebrated its 40th anniversary. We look forward to another 40 years of success in the region and to another 40 years of close cooperation with our friends in the Hong Kong Institution of Engineers. Following recent presidents Peter Wong and Thomas Chang, Sibsey board member PL Yun has become the next president of HKIE. I congratulate PL on this appointment and I'm so pleased that this yet again signifies the close cooperation between our institutions. I would like to close with a personal thank you from the UK to the Hong Kong region. In a very practical response to the COVID-19 crisis, you have answered the Construction Industry Council's call for assistance and donated thousands of pounds to purchase much needed personal protective equipment for the NHS and dispatch this to the UK. I know that this has been funded initially by large personal contributions from some of our prominent Hong Kong members. The UK is grateful indeed to you for this initiative. Things may be returning to normal, or I hope perhaps a new version of normal in Hong Kong, somewhat ahead of the UK. But nevertheless, I hope that you continue to take precautions against this virus and that you are staying safe and healthy.